Alright, Jim Cobb over at Survival Weekly is doing a little contest for a video or a uh, article. I'm going to do the video one just because of time management. <laughs> I saw it last night whenever I asked him to be on my show this coming uh, Tuesday at 9 Central, or excuse me, 9 Eastern on uh, River Broadcasting Network. He's going to be talking about his new book, The Prepper Communication Handbook. Um, and anyway, that uh, contest over at Survival Weekly is for an original video that shares informa information about some aspect of prepping or self-reliance. Um, it has to have the start date and uh, family friendly. And the giveaway is for a BFONG uh, radio, a copy of his new book, some DVDs from uh, Make Ready to Survive, and a UV marking pen and light. Um, so, if I happen to win this contest, you'll probably see a giveaway of the book, since I obviously already have a copy of it. Uh, once again, uh, Jim Cobb is going to be on my show this coming uh, Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, broadcasting com. Come see us there. So anyway, this is my video submission for that uh, contest. Basically, what I'm going to do is go through my bag in pretty good detail. I've gone through this with just the 10 C's kit in it. This is the Pathfinder XL oil skin pack. Uh, it's great for a hunting pack or black powder pack or uh, just a good woods pack in general. So the first thing is the Shemog that stays in there all the time. I used to have two uh, for the 10 C's kit and decided it just took up too much room. Uh, but basically I like it to have it in there as a little cover area to put your knees down on. Uh, Good to wrap your head around, good for a pillow, all kinds of stuff. Next main article. Is the cook set. I utilize the Pathfinder model cook set. Uh, it has the stove, the 20, I think it's six ounce cup lid and the 32 ounce bottle 32 ounce comes to right there uh, and then it's with the clean canteen lid i like that lid a whole lot better but you can see this knife or this uh bottle stands up to a heck of a lot of abuse you can see i've literally beat the crap out of it had it frozen a few times that's the reason i've stuck with it it's just been so daggone durable for me That water weight doesn't put a ton of weight in there. Uh, it's still quite manageable, so not too bad. And I drink a lot of water, so I have to have water in my kit. Next main thing. Uh, this is in my kit because uh, Chris is going to be on the show in two weeks, and I'm getting ready to do a review on one of his new knives. Uh, Chris Rockbogle. His girlfriend, by the way, makes... Great leather work, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, he has it on Meeting with Premier Minds page uh, on Facebook. Also, uh, Bushcraft Buy Trail Sale, buy, buy Trade Sale. Can't talk tonight. And a few of the Pathfinder Trade Blanket. There's a few Trade Blankets he's on that he sells. He's extremely good 90 on that thing. Uh, just real good retention on this sheath, too. Can't come out of there unless you really, really want it to. So, I've been testing that out, so it got thrown in the, the haversack here the other day. Uh, Baco Laplander. can do just about anything with this. It's bomb proof. Had it for years. Uh, you bend it just a little bit, put it down, beat it with a rock. It goes right back in place. Still cuts like a champ. Um, I've cut some fairly large trees with that and not had a problem. So, unless you're in the dead of winter and need to cut down a lot of wood for both burning and for a shelter that should be enough to get you by for a uh, three four or five day trip uh, the main belt carry knife uh, obviously if i want to be in the woods for a long term this is going to be on my belt uh, i don't usually keep it on there i usually have just a pocket knife when i'm just around town so i'm not deep in the woods so it stays in the haversack the primary use ferro rod i have to say primary use because i have another one that's behind that i use you know, in the 
in the event of emergency or if I really, really need fire, that's the one I'm going to pull out. This is just a Junker fog one from like Walmart or one of them's a Dix. It works just fine. Uh, and this is the LT Wright Bushcrafter HC. It's 1075. Uh, really fell in love with this knife. Good price point, and it just fits your hand perfect. And with this little loop, you get that extra retention on there. Man, you can really, for the price point, you really cannot beat that knife. I've never fell in love with a knife so quick, other than my more Bushcraft Black, which I absolutely adore if you've seen many of my posts over the years. What else we got in here? Alright, med kit and edible kit. This is basically a combination of Campcraft and a few others. Um, it's got several pieces of cotton material in there for char cloth, for uh, making all kinds, of, you can do anything with that cotton material. But in addition to that, I also have the uh, Campcraft's usage cards that tell you basically what all you can use the medicinals in there for. I've added a few extras. Basically, you can see what size they are. Put that out there. Mullins, they're all about that size. I'll read through his list to tell you what all's in there. I also have another little bottle of ibuprofen in there. Alright, so what's in the, the medicinal kit? I have two things of yarrow, uh, two things of plantain, rose hip tea, jewelweed, St. John's wort, bone set. Uh, two containers of, hot, of chaga, white willow bark, uh, tamaline tea, uh, two things of cinnamon, and a thing of mullen. So that's basically what's in the medicinal kit. There's usually four or five tea bags in there as well. Uh, just not in there today. I've used them all up over the week. Uh, just a basic first aid kit, some gloves. Things for nicks, scrapes, bumps, etc. Next big thing is the uh, Taurus Tracker. It's got two different types of loads in there. The uh, Hornady, basically defense load, which is for self-defense or for uh, a large game and then it's got two bear loads in it the three of the hornady and um, two of the bear loads basically I keep it with the uh, defense loads being the first to fire uh, it's 44 magnum Taurus tracker great gun great woods gun uh, it's got the uh, four inch barrel so in the state of West Virginia it's legal for uh, both hunting and concealed carry, etc. But that's the reason I went with this one. This 44 in particular is because it's also illegal for large game hunting. All right, next thing is my shelter kit. Now, I just have a bungee cord. I can get away without using a bungee cord, but the shelter in the diamond modified diamond configuration that I like to use. You can find other videos here on my YouTube channel uh, on how to set it up. It's also go to Seven Piece Blog and look. You will find several articles about that configuration and how I use it. But this kit has everything you need for a multi night stay. It's got two trash bags, uh, the ability to make a super shelter with some plastic. Uh, an SOL two-person blanket, um, lots of bank line, jute twine, tent stakes to set up that shelter, and four prussics ready to go along with these, so uh, six total prussics for shelter setup. Uh, great stuff for making char material for starting fires, and then the bank line this is number 36. Always, always useful. 
Uh, this shoulder configuration I've used in the winter, I've used in the summer. Uh, basically, it's a perfect shoulder kit. You have some pine, throw it in the bottom, uh, then get that uh, SOO blanket over top of you along with some more boughs. And you are going to stay super warm inside that super shelter. You just have a small little fire out front. Um, great, great, great way to stay extremely warm, even well below zero. And the final thing is a little hip bag, which would normally obviously be on my hip if we're going to be in the woods long term. What do we have in here? A hands-free light. Some fat wood. Uh, the primary use uh, ferro rod. Some more 36 bank line. Some number 12 bank line. This is great for sewing. Uh, this is what I use basically for pulling my uh, bottle out of the fire. You just put a toggle on it and lift your bottle out of the fire real quick. Jeff White Spear Point. The reason I decided to carry this one, uh, I'll do a review on this soon, but basically that Jeff White Spear Point has a long enough handle on it that you can use it as a backup blade. Two sides sharpened, so that's an extra, cool extra blade. It also has a really, really good scraper on it as well for removing bark or paraffin rocks from seal removal. Uh, we have. Compass with mirror and also a whistle. That's actually pretty loud. Excuse me. Okay. That was adjustable declination, all that good stuff. Pretty good compass. Leatherman tool that has just about everything I ever need, along with some wood carving implements in there so you can make a spoon on the fly if you need to uh, small lighter that I almost never use all right we'll get into these two kits I've got other videos on these uh, I do a ton of fire kit videos uh, fire videos and fire articles so there's three to four versions of my fire kit and this micro 10 piece kit so if either of these intrigue you uh, just hit the 7-piece blog or my personal page and Google Micro Kit and you will see a ton of information on these. And the Micro Kit, there's a whole series of where I tested every single thing in this. Um, there's probably 30 or 40 different posts where I have gone through the years of changing this out to get it to be where it's basically you could be self-reliant out of that little box. But uh, flint and steel, long-term self-reliance, uh, fire pad, uh, fire starter. Uh, basically, that'll burn for about 15 minutes. It's uh, camp fuel and uh, wax and cotton. Several pieces of uh, flint and the Traer fire tool. If you guys haven't got one of these, it's also another flint and steel striker. It's got a uh, flat nose uh, screwdriver, a nice scraper. You can use a smoke sh a spoke shave. Uh, Barrier's rasp as well. Um, yeah, all kinds of good use. There's also another file, file blade there, and this side can be used as your flint and steel. That was a bad idea open all this up. But. About uh, 25 30 feet of gorilla tape. And then this is my micro 10 C's kit, which, like I said before, there's a ton of information on the 7 piece blog about this. Just head over there and look at one of the many articles. Uh, another long term fire starter it's a 4X Frenzel magnifier. Backup container. <clears throat> Uh, the Ready Man Trapper card. All kinds of stuff in there for trapping and small game self-reliance. Uh, water bag. Basically, it's a produce bag. 
You can do all kinds of stuff with that and make a water filter. Uh, use it for water collection. All kinds of good stuff with that. I did three or four tests. You can actually bring water to a boil on these and they're 100% free. Uh, surgical blade and a rad detection thing um, involved in the fire department has that. Uh, so that just stays in there. Pull it out and it's a, basically a sticker that you can use if I'm on a long term scene. Alright, now the actual contents. One little fire starter. Some fat wood. Uh, some fishing line. Button compass. Which I always have one anyway on my wrist there. Uh, a little bit larger thing of uh, fishing line. The other one's spider wire, so it's a little bit heavier duty. An entire fishing kit, there's some jigs, a bunch of hooks, some safety pens, um, several sinkers, etc. Little wire saw. Piece of flint. Large hook. Another little fire starter along with a uh, flint striker knife. Uh, you can process a trout with this thing. I've uh, done some pretty good testing with this. Works out pretty well. Magnesium with uh, ferrocene rod just as a backup to my backup to my backup. Um, some 36 bank line, some jute twine, um, some trapping wire, and in the bottom you will see a uh, leader, steel leader. Another section of Gorilla Tape, which is about 20 feet, and also um, some more cotton material for making char. So with just this one container, you could probably be pretty self-reliant for several days, if not longer, but uh, it's part of the overall kit. So this would be, you add a little bit of food to it easily, a three-day weekend, um, depending on weather conditions and what you're wearing. Uh, basically for three days or a week or even longer you can get by with just your knife some common sense and wearing the correct clothes so that if you get under a pine tree and lean your head up against it you're going to be warm and fuzzy all weekend all you got to do is worry about food after a while and water um, but we get everything we need for that uh, strong knowledge of medicinals and uh, wild edibles up in your head and you're good to go so this is my basic haversack kit for whenever I go in the woods um, especially during hunting season, which is always on my hip, along with some more shooter material. So um, I encourage you to head over to Survival Weekly. Uh, there's going to be a chance to free to vote. Uh, check out Jim Cobb, and remember to come see us. Uh, we talk about his new book, the Prepper Communication Handbook, this coming uh, Monday over at uh, PrepperBroadcasting.com, um, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 Pacific. If you have any questions you want to talk to Jim about or myself about communication uh, in a the end of the world type of situation or just everyday communications that are uh, kind of something you wouldn't think about. Hope you have a great weekend and happy Easter everyone.